Hi everybody, welcome to my second vlog. Um, I can't believe how long it's been since I did my last one where I was wishing everybody a um, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Um, I know that I said I'll be doing more of them in 2012 and um, I guess I will because I've done none before then so this is quite an easy target to keep to. Um, right, so I said that this vlog was going to be a Q&A so thank you so much to everyone who sent in your questions to me. Um, I can't get through all of them, but I will try and get through as many as I can. Um, right, okay, so kicking off. Um, right, okay, Nazia Mativala, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce all your names correctly. So Nazia asked me, she, Nazia, you sent me like a list of 20 questions, girl, so I'm only going to answer like three of them. Um, so you asked me what my best memory was. Okay, one of my best memories, um, it's the sweetest, like if I talk about it too much, I'll start crying, but um, one of the sweetest memories that I have is when I was about, I think I was about like 14 years old and my sister was like five years younger than me. Um, I really wanted to go out with my friends, but I didn't have any money and my mom said that she wouldn't give me any money to go out with my friends. Um, so I was really upset and I was in my room and I was crying. And my little sister, whom I love so much, um, she came and sat down next to me and she was like, oh, you know, she started crying too. From looking at me crying, she started crying. And she was like, don't worry, like, I'll, I'll sort this out, she says. And um, bless her heart, she goes into her room and, and I was still just in my room thinking, okay, you know, whatever. Um, she got dressed up, she got my little cousin to like dress up and it was like end of September, so it wasn't even Halloween. And they got dressed up and um, off she went and she started doing like trick or treating, but it wasn't Halloween. And um, she connect she collected like 15 pounds and then she came to me and she was like, here, you know, here's 15 pounds. So hopefully you can go out with your friends. And it was just the sweetest thing, the sweetest thing. And she's a sweetheart. So love you lots, Manya. So, um, so that, yeah, that's one of my best memories. So you've also asked me whether I like to stay in or out, go out definitely be staying in. I've done the going out, you know, or uni, you know, I went out four times a week. It was good fun. I still got a two one. So remember, study hard. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I've done all of that. So I much prefer staying in, watching a good movie, just snuggling up and yeah, just being comfortable after a hard day's work. So definitely staying in. Um, the best book I've ever read. Okay. I really like my chiclets, I've got to say. There's some really great books out there that I could re recommend professionally and all of that stuff, but the best book that I've ever read, and it's beautiful, is this book. It's um, The Last Letter from Your Lover by Jojo Moyes. It's just an incredible book. You're all going to think that like Jojo Moyes is like sponsoring me or something. She's not. I love the book. It's beautifully written, really well-structured. Um, so if you like your chiclets or, or otherwise, just give it a try. It's an amazing book, an incredible book. So I really, really liked it. Okay, so thank you for those questions, Nazia. Lots of love. Um, right, okay, so um, is it Horpatan? You asked me about my political views. Okay, so um, rather than talk about what party I support or whatever, I'll tell you what I would do if I was in Parliament. One thing that I really believe is that why do we have political parties? So during Prime Minister question time, I don't want to sit and hear uh, political parties sort of saying, OK, well, your party said this, your party did this, your pa I don't care what party did what as a taxpayer. I care what people do with the money, what you know, medical services we have, all of these things. You know, like, for example, when does the local bus go, the trains go on time? These things that matter in everyday life, that's what I care about. So I think that... They should, we should get rid of political parties. Yes, there should be accountability, but I think that that should be done through committees. Um, committees that are relevant to each area of policy and people who are um, given a space on those policies. So, so the MPs um, should also be voted in based on their relevant skills and experience to that area. So at the moment, we have ministers in office who actually have no relevant experience or um, any qualifications in the areas that they're leading the country on. And I find that quite strange. So I would change that. Um, right. So Douglas Gray, um, you asked me what my favourite films, um, programmes that I watched as a child and that I still watch today. 
I am really, really um, nostalgic about my past. I like being in touch with, um, you know, my young side. Like, for example, here in my office, I have this. Like, it just sits here. I have um, Play-Doh. I have a little snow globe. Like, honestly, I have things in this office that just, like, just to keep in touch with a child within. So... Um, I still watch the things that I watched when I was little um, and obviously when I grew up I used to live in Sweden so as a child I used to watch Astrid Lindgren who is a legend um, but yeah Pif this is Lotta she also did Madikan and Piffy and I just oh I love it and um, so yes yeah, so I still watch that and think about um, my younger days as, as little Melody <laughs> um, right okay Shama Khan you asked me what did I want to do as a child and um, what fueled me to set up a social enterprise? Good question. So um, as a child, um, I wanted to actually be a designer. I wanted to be a clothes designer um, with a passion. I mean, I still have the um, folders and folders of sketches that I used to do. And I remember when I was eight years old, I actually walked to my local library on my own, sat down, took out books, on um, like historical um, clothing, the way through history that, that uh, clothes had changed and so forth and designs. And I actually sat there with my sketchbook and actually drew them out and like read the books. And I was like eight years old, so I wanted to do it with a passion. Uh, but as I got older, I sort of um, realized I have strengths in different areas and that um, perhaps it wasn't for me, but I, I still have a, an interest in fashion and, and clothes and create the creative side. So um, the reason that I, what, you know, what fueled me to set up a social enterprise, it wasn't actually the fact that I was interested in business. I actually wasn't interested in business. I wasn't interested in money. Um, it was more about the fact that I was really, really passionate about doing something that was more than just going to school and coming home. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to be a part of uh, conversations around change, about better ways of doing things, about policy. Um, so when I was 13 years old, I used to read a magazine called Just 17. Um, some of you may be too young to remember that, but J17 magazine it was called. And in there, there was an article that said, um, you know, are you a young person who likes to get your voice heard? Do you want to be involved in setting up like a UK youth parliament? And I was like, wow, yes, I do, you know. And because I, I was born in Iran, obviously, and then had a very strong Persian culture, but then I grew up in Sweden, um, which is very different again. And then I moved to England when I was 13 years old. I found myself sort of thinking there must be better ways of doing things. So I went along and got involved in that. And I was 13 years old. And, um, you know, we established um, what became a fantastic organisation that changed a lot of young people's lives. And, and I've been in the youth sector ever since. And I did that voluntarily in the youth sector for 10 years without getting paid. Obviously, I was studying and everything else. But after that, I thought, how can I continue doing something that I love with a passion, um, but make it a career? So the fact that I set up a social enterprise was actually coincidental. It was, it was a way in which it allowed me to do what I love doing and make a difference to children and young people's lives and make it more than a hobby. So um, I combined my passion for the cause with a robust business model and um, then a social enterprise is born and you're a social entrepreneur. So, uh, and I actually think that that's the way forward because you can improve the economy but also do so with um, improving communities and people. So thank you for that question. Uh, Freud, Freud Clothing, um, you asked me what my favourite teacher at school was. Oh, this is an easy one. I actually emailed him yesterday. We're now in touch and that's fantastic. And his name is Mr. Featherston. Um, of, oh, he was just brilliant. Like he had so much energy. He used a lot of examples. And I still actually remember the things he used to tell me. He used to say, use a ruler, not a dog's hind leg. He used to say, complex answers have complex complex questions sorry have complex answers and more than that he taught me structure he taught me um you know how to think about things in an analytical way and he's fantastic and he's still fantastic today so so uh, hi mr featherston um right um sandra graham asked me what's the best advice i've ever been given 
Um, the best advice I've ever been given is by my dad, and he said, be yourself. And when he used to say that to me when I was, since forever he's said that to me, I used to think, dad, that is so stupid, because who else am I going to be? I can only be myself. But actually, now when I think about it, being yourself means understanding who you are. What are your strengths and weaknesses? And, and capitalising on that. The sooner you realise that you're different and what those differences are and what makes you unique and how to own it and then capitalise on it, the better. Um, I really don't like it when people say that we're, the, we're all the same because we're not the same. You know, we're equal, but we're different. And thank God we're different. So um, realise who you are. Um, and that's the best advice I've ever been given. Um, I'm going through these so quickly because I want to answer your questions. Uh, Tom Manda asked me, based on the success of Inspiring Age, do you see um, do you see yourself creating other similar projects? Um, yes, I mean, well, not not similar projects away from Inspiring Age, but certainly under Inspiring Age International. Um, I actually want to create a new cultural shift in the way that we look at success, the way that we support and encourage people to dream. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a vlog on the British dream, so that's a little taster for you, but um, keep an eye on the next vlog. Um, so sign up to the YouTube channel actually so that you can see the next vlog. Uh, Sarah Collins asked me, um, one of my interview tips, okay, and this is another one that I can do a separate vlog on in the future, but in short, three things. One, don't be Joe Bloggs. By that I mean don't try and be fit into average, okay, like don't give generic answers. Try and think of what you really feel, try and think of what you really want to say and find a way to say that um, and be unique, you know, because you're different. So um, don't give generic answers. Um, the second thing is think about your body language. The way that we say things is so important. Things like tone, you know, things like the speed. I know I'm speaking super fast now. But generally in an interview, like think about your body language, the way you're presenting yourself. Because that is, uh, if not more important, uh, as important as what you're saying. And the third thing is show passion. Don't be afraid to show a little bit of passion. Don't think that it's going to come across sort of weird or anything. Just, you know, if you're passionate about something, let that show. And, and the interviewer will pick up on that and see that you're quite genuine and that you want to work there, that you want to do it. Um, so good question, Sarah. Thanks for that. And the last question by Henna Khan, who um, runs um, the Team Hussaini on Twitter. Thank you so much for that. I love the T-shirts, by the way. Um, you asked me what my favourite inspirational quote is. I have tons of them. Literally, I've made like a collection we all take inspirations from different things and I actually take a lot of inspiration from people who've sat down and thought of conveying something, like a pearl of wisdom almost, and I'll take a lot of inspiration from that. And one of my favourite quotes is, um, courage is not the absence of fear, but it's the realisation that something else is more important. Um, and the reason that I think that that's such a great quote is because Fear is the number one reason why people don't do the things they want to do. And interestingly, actually, recently I tweeted about that there's only two um, natural fears that people have, and it's fear of falling and fear of loud noises. Everything else is learnt. So if you have a fear about something, think about it, rationalise, and um, don't let fear be the reason why you don't do something. That would be a shame if one day you looked back and thought, I, I wanted to do this, but I didn't because of fear. Um, and actually, um, Shirin Abadi, I, I say this when I go speak places, she said that the challenges that we face in life are the steps back that we take that allow us to go even further than we would have done had we started from here. And I think that's a really fantastic way to look at it. 
So, okay, right, so that's probably enough questions. I had loads more, so thank you for those who sent them in. I didn't get a chance to do all of them. But thank you so much to everybody who continues to support what we're doing with Inspire Engage International. Make sure you follow me on Twitter so you can keep up to date with what we're doing and opportunities that we post out. And uh, lots of love. I'm now off to do um, a um, Inspire Engage session at Sparks LSC event. Um, but yeah, so have a fantastic day and lots of love. Bye.